Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna conquer five nutrition myths that are commonly heard, and we're gonna explain why they're blatantly wrong and incorrect. Let's get into number one. Call me Haymaker. Always going big. Yeah, you know the kid. Number one is that saturated fat is the enemy, it's bad for you and you need to avoid it at all costs in your diet. This is simply not true guys. It's just like the fact that if you have a bunch of protein it's not going to make you super jack necessarily. Just as if you have a ton of fat you're not going to get fat. So that's where a lot of people conceive this fallacy. Saturated fat often gets blamed as well for being a proponent of heart disease. This is simply not the case. In fact, some studies actually suggest that it might help with heart health. The research is kind of uneven, but it is for sure known that it is not horrible for you. Of course, you want to have it in moderation, but it'd be very hard to reach high levels of dangerous saturated fat. Saturated fat is actually a key determinant for testosterone um, production, and if you're too low on the spectrum, you could actually hurt your testosterone, which we know is the key, the king, to building muscle and maintaining functions for men and even women with their baseline low testosterone rate. It is the king anabolic hormone. Another common myth I hear is that whole grain bread is so much better for you. When I order white bread, I kind of get a look from other people like I'm committing a sin, but this isn't true. So let me start off by saying that whole grain bread will contain more micronutrients, a little bit more fiber, and it also is lower on the glycemic index. But White bread isn't too far off. Keep in mind guys, if you're going to your gluten sources for your micronutrients and your fiber intake, you guys are doing it wrong. You should really be focusing on vegetables and fruits to getting those micros and fiber content. Do what fits your lifestyle best, but to put whole grain on a scale like this and white bread down here, it is a myth and we have just busted that, so I hope you guys learned something. Number three, this is one I hear quite often, and this is that natural foods and natural sources of vitamins and fiber content are better than supplements ones. This is simply a fallacy because this is too broad of a statement and there are dietary amino acids, dietary minerals and there are non-essential um, amino acids and nutrients that actually don't occur in the diet. So a lot of these do need to be supplemented and a lot of them do have differing bioavailabilities which in turn will affect how your body is able to use and synthesize them. Some of the nutrients and vitamins, minerals, etc. that you get in foods just aren't on the high enough, high enough levels that you would need to maintain a healthy body function. For instance, especially in people who are very depleted in certain vitamins, so those with magnesium depletion issues, uh, they need to actually have more, and it's very hard for them to do that purely through diet. So this is a very broad, over-generalized statement that it's like this. This is not the case. There are a lot of nuances to it, and it's something you need to look into. But chemicals are not always bad. Chemical supplements are good for you as well. Take your multis. Another common myth that is being plastered everywhere is that there's a correlation between high salt in your diet and high blood pressure. That salt is the direct cause for this elevation, high blood pressure, and negative heart health. This is simply not the case and has been disproven. Instead, the correlation to high blood pressure is largely associated with BMI, which is body mass index, and that is your overall health, how much body fat you're holding. Usually people with high body fats have other nutritional issues. High salt, however, is something you do want to be careful of because it can lead to other negative physical repercussions. Saying so, maintaining a higher-ish salt diet is largely okay. People like nutritional expert, PhD, Lane Norton says he actually himself has about 5,000 milligrams a day. Just wanna keep your water and make sure you're filtering it out. But if you're having too much water, you're gonna drain your potassium. That's a debate for another day. But that's just the rule of thumb that it is not directly correlated to this high blood pressure. Number five, last but not least, is the myth that you have to eat clean to get shredded. This is just an absolute fallacy. When it comes to weight loss, number one on the scale is total caloric intake. Number two is macronutrient intake. Once you guys put a lot of focus into that, you guys are eating in a deficit, you can make progress. You don't need to be eating ch uh, chicken, broccoli, none of that stuff all the time. I still like to enjoy it, but it is not necessary. We have a lot more videos. We'll link them right in the top right here, and we'll put a card on there and you guys can check them out and watch further thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you learned a lot if we get 200 likes on this video we will make a part two with more fitness nutrition myths but for now make sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one peace dog food you get the biggest one this is uh, 16 kilograms that's over 30 pounds it's a little bit less than i'm used to curling but
but it'll get me a pump.